I'm a little, a couple of minutes late. <laughs> I got a message saying, where are you? <laughs> oh my goodness. How is everyone today? Good morning, good afternoon. There's my girl, Vanessa. There's Maggie. All right, I am getting my stuff together. Hello, Eileen and Corliss. How are my lovelies? How are you? Hi, Pam, Pamela, Carol Ann is in the house. Here they come. Just want to let you know, four o'clock today for my cooking time is also going to be tea time and Marla's going to be here. And you want to be here for this because we're going to tell you about our history. And Marla's bringing her iPad and she also is probably going to be showing old pictures of us from back in our denim jumper days. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh goodness. Anyway, it's gonna be fun. Pam's fine, okay, good to know, Pam. Rebecca May in the house. Eileen is here. You are repotting flowers, how fun is that? We're having a full day of thunderstorms. <laughs> so you're catching me just before they all hit. And I'm gonna show you, I've got all kinds of stuff for you today here. And it's still morning in Redondo Beach. Yes, it is. It is Redondo Beach, folks. So, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. I love doing stuff like that. I think it's just a blast. So, the new quote of the week. Yay! Are you ready for it? There is no influence like the influence of habit. That's from Gilbert Parker. And you know, this is what has kind of spurred me on to thinking about today um, and what about, what is it that motivates us? You know, what is the thing? And what, what about actions versus inactions versus all the things? Because we get wrapped up in all that stuff. Right? And we're going to talk about all that. We are going to talk about that today. That's what we're going to do. So are, are you sharing this, by the way? <laughs> I love that quote. I think it's such a good quote. Yes. Share this video. Um, please, if you would, um, share this video. Bring people in. Let's, let's get people excited about what it is that we're doing as a community. We have an incredible, an incredibly vibrant community. I don't know about you, but I feel so blessed every single day. Hi, Diane. You know, <clears throat> there are people out there who are extraordinarily lonely. They've been in this whole isolation bubble for months now. And this is how we can reach out. This is how we connect. Connect. I like connection. Connection makes me feel like a human being. <laughs> And that's how we're wired. That's what's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what's inside of us. You know, at least today I'm not starting the, off the show with a bunch of sneezing. Although the rain helped yesterday and got rid of a lot of that pollen. I don't know about you, but we get pollen around here in North Carolina. And I enjoy being on the top of my mountain and I enjoy looking out and having that calm and that peace every day. But I also like the calm and the peace of my home. I like the calm and the peace of my rituals that I have in the morning and in the evening. I like the calm and the peace that <clears throat> taking care of myself brings. Have you noticed that? All of these things add up. They all add up to a life that you want to live. That's pretty cool. But we're also, you know, we have to start looking at the very base level of our communities because community is everything. Without community, we feel like you know, we're just alone, hermits. We're not meant to be that. On June 7th, June 8th, we start our sprint. Gosh, can you believe where it's almost there? It's free, you can find it at savingdinner.com. It's called the Hot Melt Sprint and it's seven days of an anti-inflammatory approach to getting rid of the inflammation and feeling better and it's free. So check it out, go to savingdinner.com. You have to sign up to get it. You'll get the email sequence as it comes out. Everything's automated and there's a little video every single day that motivates you to keep going. We've seen 
so many great stories. We have like 2,600 people who've been through this program and they love it. And it's free. We also have lots and lots of supplements, you guys, um, in our Digestimes, which I highly recommend if you have any kind of digestive anything going on. These will help you tremendously. Um, this is your ship's free promo code. So if you put this in your cart and all the other things that you want, and you type in ships free and the promo code, all one word, guess what? You don't pay shipping. I do. I pay it for you. So check it out. You spend $200, you get a mindful mug for free. And a sweet little note from me. This is what it looks like. That'll be from me in the mail. And one more thing. Don't forget, we have the body clutter. Wise Women Supplements, all four of them, the core four. We sent an email out today and telling you all about them. It was a long, long email, you know, and I'm not going to apologize for that, but I wanted to educate you about why these things are so important. So check it out, and if you're not getting our emails, go to savingdinner.com and you can get it. All right. So don't forget, today at 4 p.m., Marla Silly will be here in my house. And we're going to be telling you our history and sharing some funny stories. And, you know, we've been friends for 20 years, so we've got some good stuff. <laughs> we've got some good stuff to dish up. Um, that's at 4 p.m. today. And there will be no tea time at 3. Tea time will be here at 4. So we're doing a combo, you know, Memorial Day thingy. That's what I have to say to you about that. Don't forget, also, Dinner Answers is $7 a month. That's pandemic pricing. Prices will go back up once we, are we ever gonna get through this pandemic, y'all? I hope so. So let me, I've got some um, things I wanna discuss I think are gonna be super helpful for you because one of the things that I hear all the time from my coaching clients and from people who are in my groups is why do I not do the things that I wanna do? You know, it's we think that we wanna do all these things and then it's time to go do them and we don't do them. Have you ever been in that place? <laughs> Have you ever been in that place of, of just, they're not big. Trisha, look, they're, they're your normal, they're your normal supplement, it's a capsule. It's a capsule, they're not big. They do go down smoothly, they're veggie count. So anyway, sorry, I just got sidetracked a little bit, but have you noticed that, that you do that? Have, everybody does. And we think to ourselves, why do I do the very thing that I don't wanna do and I don't do the thing that I do wanna do? What is it? Where, where's the motivation? And when does the motivation kind of trigger and get us to the place where we finally get over that hump? Well, I don't have the answers for that. <laughs> Ta-da, I'm done. No, I really, I sincerely do not have the answers for that. If I, if, if I had the answers for that, I, everyone would be, have not have a weight problem and we'd all be rich, wouldn't we? It's true. If we didn't have that problem, we'd all have, I mean, seriously, you know, that would be, that would be the full stop. We're done. <laughs> but we all have something that keeps us locked in to inaction or taking the wrong actions. And we, we get kind of stuck. And you know what the inactions are that, and I always say, really, actions are decisions, aren't they? Actions are decisions. And inactions are also decisions. They're non-decisions, but they're decisions nonetheless. And what we do or don't do is to either escape or to achieve some kind of a feeling. We either want to feel better or we want to avoid pain of some sort. Isn't that the truth? Have you noticed that about yourself? And especially now, and this is why I, I keep saying, and for those of you who came, you know, last, gosh, can you believe it's been over a month, when you came to um, the Full Bloom event, that was my whole thing. We've got to take all of this stuff that we're learning and we want in our lives and all this goodness and juicy, fun stuff that is gonna make a difference in our lives and wrap it up in a great big bow of grace. Because here we are in, tr just trying to navigate through this unknown territory. And we all need that kind of grace. Oh my gosh, don't we need that grace? 
that grace is what gets us through. It's a safety net. It's loving arms, you know, it's, it's a big embrace and a hug. It was, it's everything. And I will tell you this, and this, this much I know for sure, that just doing one thing is enough. Just doing one thing is enough. And isn't that so good? So if you make your week, you know, a hydration week that you're gonna focus on that habit and just let the other stuff kind of go for right now, not beat yourself up, keep it, you know, on the kind of open-handed way and let yourself know, hey, we can handle this. We can we can take care of this in a, in a week or in another week or a month or whatever. It's not the end of the world. That's what we've got to do for ourselves. When we do that, then we're, we're able to get, you know, we're able to, you know, get through on the other side. But we're talking about actions versus inactions. And what is, what is it, you know, what is it that we need to do in order to, to get there? Um, how do we, how do we avoid, you know, gain the pleasure and avoid the pain? You know, what, what, what can we do with that? Well, I have some ideas about that, as you can well imagine. And, it, you know, I've got a set up for different things like that. And I'm actually working on something new that I'm calling my ha the habit stack. And I'll, I'll tell you all about that at a later date. I'm probably going to do, maybe even do like a small webinar or something on it. I don't know. But it, there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on personally for myself that I'm finding to be really helpful. But the thing that we, that we have to look at is what is the motivation behind inaction versus taking action. And that is, like I said, it is the avoidance of pain. There's pain involved. Well, that means that I'm gonna to have to do this instead. That means that I have to create this new habit. And your brain is rebelling the entire time because your brain is saying, let's stay safe, let's keep doing the things that we always do, let's do this, let's do that. You know, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? Your brain is always seeking to keep you safe, always. No if, ands, or buts about it. So we have to look at the focus on pain or pleasure. And we also have to tell our brain that this is okay, that you can start collecting evidence for why this is a good thing to do, right? So for example, the gym. And for me, this is a funny thing because for me, there's a whole representation of why go to the gym versus doing it at home? And why is it when I spend more time just to get to the gym, to suit up, to do the things, to all of that, why is it that that is, I'll do that, but I don't want to do this? Why is that? Why are we in, why are we in that place, right? And then the other thing is, you know, so we understand that the other thing is, is that our brain wants to collect evidence to support what it, it, what it thinks it knows. And what it thinks it knows from the most primitive part is the avoidance of pain. If we do this, this is going to cause pain. If we do this, that means you're going to not be able to do that. Why don't we just sit here instead and do Netflix? Why don't we just sit here instead and just let, you know, let something else go or just not do the laundry or not take out the trash or not do this. Let's just do, do this instead and play a game on our phone. Isn't that the truth? Because we don't want that. We, we want the easy, fastest pleasure route. We seek pleasure over pain. We avoid the pain and then we seek the pleasure and then we hate it li later. That is the carousel of crazy, you guys. That is it, right there in a nutshell. That is it. We get stuck on the carousel of crazy. The carousel of crazy isn't just a diet mentality, so to speak, even though we can use that over and over again for how our diet lives have gone, you know, up and down with the weight, around and around going nowhere, looking for a new guru, trying that one on, trying this one, trying another crazy diet, Gaining, losing, gaining, losing. I mean, you know the whole crazy thing. That's the carousel of crazy. We all do it. But we do it with other areas of our lives as well. We do it because we're always seeking pleasure and trying to avoid the pain. 
And that's the difference between action and inaction. That's the difference between a decision and, an in, and no decision. And what you know, because you've heard me talk about this a million times, no decision is a decision just as much as, as a decision is. So what we have to do is we have to do, and, and understand this, people are going to do more to avoid pain than to seek out the pleasure, right? So the pleasure sometimes is a long, it's a long process to get to the pleasure. So for example, the cute jeans, the cute jeans is definitely a pleasure, but it takes some pain to get to those cute jeans. It takes denying yourself, uh, maybe cake, you know, donuts and, and sugar and stuff, um, working out, hydrating, you know, doing all the things. It, that's a longer process. The shorter term process is to say, forget that. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Just this once, I'm going to eat the fill in the blank. Just this once, I'm not going to go to the gym. Just this once or not today, maybe tomorrow, and this and this is how it goes, and it becomes a long chain of avoidance, a long chain of avoiding the pain, and that is the motivation behind the inaction, is that we just don't want the pain. And even though we know, logically, because we're big girls and we're abstract thinkers and we understand how this works, that down the road, we're gonna have a big time payoff and it's gonna become in those the before and after picture and it's gonna make us feel better and it's gonna be great. But in the meantime, cheesecake is calling your name. <laughs> Am I right? But you know, the thing that we have to look at is that this is the perception of pain. It's not the truth. It's the perception of pain. It's the perception that your brain has about the pain, really. And you know this because if you've done the sprint with me or if you're in one of my groups or whatever, you know what the payoff is for even short term for doing the right thing. We all do, but our inaction is the, short, the shortest route and even our action, you know, is the shortest route to avoidance of pain. You know what I mean. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So when we're looking at this, you know, this, this survival, the, our brain's survival is to always, always avoid the pain. It prefers that. And it beats our desire to do the better thing every single time. So what we have to do is we have to manipulate our brain essentially, and, and check it and show us that there is a way to do this that is, you know, more fun, easier, not as painful, and in, in fact can be a habit, and it can be a habit that, in, that becomes something that we do on a daily basis just this much just this month, just the uh, the hour goes off and we drink our water, you know, on the alarms on our phone. Um, the we, we have the ability to switch it up at any time to do this. We just have to convince our brain that it's a safe thing to do. So what we do then is we stop this and we develop what, I, I, what I'm starting to call a habit stack. And that is, we have our morning and we have our evening rituals. We stack our, thi our things together so that they flow nicely. And then we also can piggyback, once we've got that down, we can also piggyback other habits on that. So I've shared this before, but my habit in the morning and my part of my morning ritual is when I'm making my coffee, I race to unload the dishwasher. And as the dishwasher is unloaded, then I do a four minute workout. I'm not allowed to have the coffee until the four minute workout is done. Then I've added on the hydration. I need to have at least five gulps, one, two, three, four, five, right? And if I do that, I've started the day right. If I do that, I've given myself, I've given myself everything I need. But before I even go into the kitchen, I do a 15 minute meditation, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. Then into the kitchen, then back onto the couch, and I have my reading, I've got my journal, I've got all my stuff that I do. 
and it's easier to do because I am now connecting the pain of not doing it than the pain of getting it started. Do you see the difference? That's the convincing of my mind that it's more painful to say no to doing things that I know are good for me than to do them, to, than to not do them. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that's, I just wanted to share that with you. That was kind of a little bit of a, an aha for me as I looked at what is it, what's the motivation behind inaction versus action? And how do you take more action? And there, there are so many things that, um, let me see if I can find that one thing that I wanted to say. Oh, the other thing that I had for you was um, some thoughts. You know, your thoughts are the things that become, then later become the habits. Like you have this thought, like I want to do a four minute workout every day. So what do you do? You set reminders on your phone to bring it up, put into your mind. You use your um, take back your life journal and that's part of your morning ritual. You have it in there and you have it written out and you have it in front of you. You use sticky notes. I mean, my goodness, can I just tell you, look, this is this is how skinny my, my little pad of sticky notes are because I'll take these and I'll just plow, plow them all over the house. Reminder, do this. Reminder, do that. I love them and I even like, bet, even better, I like cards because I can just take those cards. I can put one in my purse. I can put one in my car. I can put one on my bathroom mirror. But the reminder is always there. When it's in front of you, it gets done. And the other thing is you can start kind of singing maybe even, have you ever sang a song and then changed the words up a little bit? That's a jingle. Have you, you know, you can sing jingles. How many of you can sing um, jingles for commercials? right? How many of you? I know you can. And what if you changed the words and changed it to something about, you know, doing a certain thing? You know, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Plop, plop, um, fizz, fizz. I'm going to do a four minute workout right now. <laughs> I can't do it. You know, it's just, in other words, we have the ability to play games with our heads to get the work done that needs to get done. Marla does this all the time. She does it all the time. She makes it fun. She, she rolls the dice, she pulls out a number. Everybody go pull, you know, pull the sheets off your bed. And everybody does it and they love it. It's fun, it's a game. We have the ability to do that too. With whatever it is, wherever we're finding ourselves being held back. And the, the discovery of all of that, instead of just having this vague frustration in the back of your head, the discovery is finding out about it in your journal. I'm not doing this. What am I not doing? Write it out. Write out what it is that you need to do. And you know, you could do things like a screensaver on your phone or on your, on your um, laptop or whatever of the habit that you're trying to do that week. You can have it be your password. I've shared that before. You remember the man who was so bitter against his wife, ex-wife. He was so bitter again, he couldn't get past it. And he changed his password. He was in, a, in the IT business and he changed his password to forgive wh whatever her name was. And he had it you know, with all these different symbols. And every day he had to type that in. And it started to click in. And this is what I'm saying, is that when we have a clear idea of what it is, what where our actions or our inactions are, like the procrastination or avoidance or whatever it is that's holding us back from what it is that we want, we have the ability to get over it. We have the ability to get over it. We just are changing our mind and we're making it our change of that mind subconscious because that's the subconscious is the one that's ruling the roost right so if we bring it all to this to the front of our minds and it's in our face everywhere it's in our password it's on our screensaver it's in a flash card it's sticky notes it's going to happen but the first step is the discovery what is it that you're not doing what is it that you want to change and that becomes the thing that your brain needs to be trained into. It's all about the brain, you guys. Remember that, it's all about how your brain perceives things and tries to keep you safe and being in the subconscious versus being the conscious mind. We wanna live 
Bruce Lipton says we live 95% of our lives in the subconscious. I call it Groundhog Day. We do the same thing over and over again, feeling vaguely dissatisfied, not knowing why we're not feeling great about our lives, not getting the results that we want, always finding ourselves sabotaging ourselves. But the way we get out of that is to set up a whole new paradigm and to have it right in front of us, in our faces, at all times, and make a conscious decision to flip the switch and to say, that is the, that's the path I'm going to take. And when we do that, let me just say this, when we do that, <laughs> things start to change. We're no longer living Groundhog Day lives. We're no longer living and doing the same things over and over again and living that insanity lifestyle of expecting a different result. We're getting results and we're taking the right actions and we're stopping with the inactions because there it is in our face showing us what it is that we need to do. And I invite you to do this. Make your own habit stack somehow, whatever it is that's going to Flip the switch for you, but make your make sure that it's in front of your face, in front of your face, reminding you to change your mind, to flip the switch, to go forward. There you go. That's what I have for you on this Motivational Monday. And I'm watching this gigantic stink bug climb up the, the, the wood here. I have to go get it now because I hate them so much. He's going to have a very... Uh, let's just say he's going to be meeting the plumbing here shortly. I appreciate you guys. I will see you at 4 p.m. here um, as we have our tea time. Peace out, you guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.